Savvy, Savvy, Nick is Savvy. We don't see this that often. What's popping, Savvy? Uh, maybe let's make sure you are muted, Savvy. There we go. Go ahead. Hey, Nick. What's popping, guys? So I'm going to get right into it. I uh, will welcome, welcome our guest, former presidential candidate, Arthur, writer. Um, thank you for joining us on the Revolutionary Blackout, Marianne Williamson. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, Sabby. Nice to see you again. Hey, nice to see you. I know it's been a minute. <laughs> it has, but I see you sometimes. And I saw you once and I, 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 I heard you say something like, well, I'll try to have her on. I sort of felt like, well, text me right now. You know, I expect to hear from you then. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So I appreciate you coming on and taking the time. Uh, we are extremely critical of efforts uh, in running in a Democratic Party, and that's why. Yeah, I know. I've noticed. <laughs> yeah, you. Pro so you probably have seen some criticisms that we have. Yeah, had. yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Of course, I have. On rumors of you running, because I don't think it's official yet. Uh, <laughs> and I want to pose this question to you, and then we can have. I usually have a free flow conversation, but I have a few questions. Then Savvy will jump in with some questions as well. Uh, I worked on the Bernie campaign, quit my job, <laughs> put a lot of labor hours into the Bernie campaign. I know I, I had so many conversations, met with people, talked with people who was broke, struggling, who was still donating money to the Bernie campaign. One hundred million dollars spent by the working class on the Bernie campaign. And what did we get? We get we got a guy in a movement who threw away his political revolution, who abandoned his outside game. And what I consider a hundred thousand dollars, sorry, one hundred million dollars thrown in the drain. Now, what we got by investing that kind of money is literally PR agents of the Democratic Party. Bernie Sanders is a war pig who's funding war. They are apologizing for the same things they used to criticize Trump for. So I see that as a wa massive waste of the working class money to do that again, especially someone wanting, running in the Democratic Party and someone I view as being a little bit too soft on Biden Democratic Party. So I'm gonna ask you, why do you think people should invest in your campaign considering what we already wasted? Well, I think much of what you said is a legitimate argument. I think there are a lot of legitimate points to be made here. Uh, one of the times I saw you, Sabi, you were mentioning something that I had said about running as a Democrat and being nostalgic for the F uh, Democratic Party of FDR. And you said on your show, oh, Marianne, that Democratic Party doesn't exist anymore. Well, you're right, actually. And that's why I was hoping you were actually going to write. I almost once said, well, let me on it because you're right. And I certainly understand someone your age, you haven't even seen that Democratic Party, whereas I at least have some institutional memory. My point to that is so the, the corporatist Democrats would say to, to progressives that we're trying to hijack the party. They hijack the party. Now, your argument seems to be then don't even give any money or anything to do with the Democratic Party. I, I can see that argument. But to me, there's another argument which aligns with my, my view more, which is, first of all, I don't agree that Bernie Sanders made no difference. Uh, Medicare for all is now a mainstream, uh, mainstream issue in a way that it would never have been had he not run. The whole idea of the egregious uh, gap between the functioning of this government and advocacy for the working people of the United States, I don't think would be in the mainstream dialogue the way it is had Bernie Sanders not run for president. And I also think if, and once again, I'm not saying you should do it, but I do say if all of us say to hell with the Democratic Party and just leave, then you're going to have two. Already we have a corporate duopoly. Already we have a situation. We have one party completely bought and sold by the corporatists. We have another party which tries to have it both ways. But if we all leave, then you've got two major parties doing that. So I simply submit that it is as legitimate those of us who feel like working within the Democratic Party as those working out. To me, the, the break... No, you guys South Revolutionary Energy. So the working class, we only have a finite amount of resources. We're not like the corporations. So neoliberals and the conservatives, they can spend endless amount of money on, on, on this cash. That hundred million dollars is hundred million dollars that not going. Yeah, down. but that was not that was that was an, a, a working person who gave five dollars or gave ten dollars, or I would argue that many people, and many people I know, who are working that. people who gave five or ten dollars, feel that that money went towards Bernie, 
being able to put on the stage the ideas that he did. I feel the same way about my talking and, about and, reparations. And I hear you saying. I hear you saying. Yeah. And Bernie abandoned his outside movement. Like we had marches for Medicare for all that we couldn't get the people to tweet about. And Medicare for all, as a movement within the Democratic Party, is dead. And Biden. I'm sorry, Bernie killed the revolutionary energy needed while people was asking and demanding Medicare for all by now telling people that the Democratic Party and Biden is okay. Biden said he would veto Medicare for all. There's not even a discussion on the public option. So there's no That's argument to be made that we've gone forward on the healthcare issue. Mm -hmm. We have gone backwards because now you got progressive DSA sheep herding people to the Democratic Party that would never give you Medicare for all. Well, I think we have gone forward in terms of a mainstream conversation. Listen, I'm not here as, as Bernie Sanders' uh, uh, PR agent, and you have your views and I have mine, and I think that's really what this is all about. We None of us have a monopoly on truth. I think all of us have pieces of it. Truth is a kaleidoscope yeah, I understand. to me. Uh, and, I, you know, I, did, I yeah, just want to... I want to get you in on this. I just want to ask a follow-up to that because I want to make sure I, I, I asked the original question because I, I didn't want you to put... I, I wasn't trying to put you on the back heel defending Bernie, the question is like, why after that investment, seeing how disappointing these these politicians, some of those people you still apologize for, why should we make wait, that? Who, wait, who, wait, 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 why you say some of those you still apologize for? Who am I apologizing well, Bernie. for? Like Bernie has been a massive disappointment. So what I am saying, like, even if you don't run, because that's just a rumor, our criticism is running within the Democratic Party and wasting resources and energy that should be spent on third parties and outside mutual aid organizations. So my question is, why should people invest in your campaign after seeing the waste that I would consider a waste after seeing him support war, being responsible for Raytheon and Boeing making record profits? That's a waste. He, he did not do what we sent him to do. So why should people invest in that? <clears thing? throat> well, first of all, that's your view. I don't even see Bernie exactly as you do. But if I run, people should hear what I say. And if they believe what you believe, then they shouldn't vote for me. This is a well, democracy. This is what a democracy is about. You have right. your view. I have my view. Yeah, and right. I don't think, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a saying in AA, attraction, not promotion. I'm not going to be trying to manipulate anybody into seeing it the way I see it. I'm going to put out what I believe, and people will do what they want to do. And I think in terms, particularly those of us who are aligned on so many issues, um, we shouldn't let the fact that we see things differently in this area or that area keep us from... Um, working towards a cohesive movement that would be a fundamental economic reform in this country. Yeah, thank you. So, Barry, and um, you mentioned reparations. That's one of the questions that I had is, uh, you know, a while back we had this discussion about reparations. I think you educated a lot of people when you came on to talk about that. And since then, I've talked about it every now and then here and there. And other people have come on that are reparations activists trying to push for that as well. Uh, in 2020, for your presidential campaign, uh, that was like your number one issue. And so I'm curious if you do decide to run in 2024, will that still be your number one issue? And if so, how will you persuade the segment of the progressive or the, the left per se that is against <clears throat> reparations? Because when I do have these discussions on my show, I notice the audience is like 50-50, like 50% is for it and the other 50% is like, no, don't talk about it because it's divisive. How will you pers uh, persuade those progressives that are against reparations? You know, if I run, the governing principle, the governing strategy is to say what I think needs to be said. It's like I was just saying to Nick, it's not about persuading. It's I'm going to say what I think. And I'm going to say what I would do if I were president. And then you either vote for me or not. I'm submitting the belief that this country cannot move forward without healing our past. I submit that there is a debt that is owed. I submit that we have, you know, we had 250 years of slavery. We had, except for uh, the 12 years of Reconstruction, another 100 years of um, uh, institutionalized suppression of Black people in the American South. I probably talked to you before, Savvy, on your show about how I've had the experience many times with white audiences feeling there's such undereducation that when they really see it, they go like, yeah. Right. I believe that that's the job of a president and of a candidacy to put something out there as a kind of huge bully pulpit. And now we had in the 1960s, we had the v Voting Rights Act, which has been gutted. We had the uh, Civil Rights Act. I think that if King had lived, 
And if either Johnson or Humphrey had been president next, I think there's a good chance it would have gotten to the third piece that's necessary, and that's economic remuneration. And until we do, we will be handing this toxic baton one generation to the next. The chances of, see the value of the fact that I'm not from that system, the chances are so minicule that I would become president. There's nothing to keep me from saying what I really believe, whether somebody agrees with me or not. I believe we owe reparations. If part of the left doesn't like it, it's no different than my beliefs about anything else. Somebody doesn't like it, it's not, I'm a, you know, I'm a grown woman. I'm gonna say what I believe needs to be said. I'm gonna hear other people's opinion because sometimes you know, none of us have a monopoly on truth and I might be changed, but I don't see my opinion being changed on reparations because to me, it's a moral issue. Uh, it's a spiritual issue, it's a psychological issue, as well as a, a, um, a an economic issue. And I would n love nothing more than to be the president who says, we, we don't need another commission to gather evidence. We know the evidence, let's sit down, let's do some negotiation, let's get this done. The very thought is so exciting to me, it's worth running for president. I'll pass it to Nick. Uh, great question, Savvy. Reparations is something that I'm very passionate about. Uh, that's something that I gave props to you before as well. Um, and that's actually kind of to the tweet that I mentioned before. Um, but it's it good to be good on the issues of reparations. Um, the problem is the Democratic Party would never, ever give us that without this kind of struggle. Um, and that's why Unless, I was. I'm sorry. No, no Unless, I, I hear from you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, unless we elect more progressives. You know, this struggle that you're talking about uh, of suppressing uh, um, progressive voices on the presidential level, as I'm sure you realize, occurs the same way on the congressional level. They suppress on the primary, look what they did to Nina Turner. Even the progressive caucus didn't support her. Even the black caucus didn't support her. So that corporatist element suppressing progressive voices in the Democratic Party occurs on the um, on the um, congressional level, just like it does on the president. And the only way to override that is through a massive political revolution at the ballot box. Which So where you take that to go third party, that makes me say, we got to get in there. And I don't think either of us is wrong. I just think we have to do everything, whatever our gut says, our heart, go for it. That's yeah, how I, I love the energy thing. and I never dissuade people from taking, the, taking their shots. And I always say that, our focus should be 15% electoral politics, not that much. That 15% is organizing for stuff like reparations and class wins. I have a theory. I'm not sure if I'm 100% right, like we all say, but I have a theory that, especially with, as you said, Black Caucus, Democratic Party, you got all these neoliberals that are against reparations. There is no way that as a Black community, we are getting what we want politically through the two-party duopoly. We are 13% of the I population, understand. and both parties wedge that. They wedge that against us. And we voted for the Democratic Party at a 90% rate every single year. So they don't even run on our issues. Everyone else gets their issues except ours. Yeah. The only theory I have to, of change in terms of electoral politics, which I wouldn't put that much stock in, the only theory of change that makes sense to me is as Black people and our allies, we form third parties, and then we force the politicians to carve that support. So if you lose an election as a Democrat because you lost a black vote, I guess the next candidate has to run on reparations then, right? So that's why well, I, third parties have to be a leveraging tool of our community who gets nothing. Uh, under the Biden administration right now, black Americans are weak. Our community has been destroyed. The police yeah. is stronger than ever. We get nothing going through the strategy. So with 50, I'm a, this, this is my question, 50% Americans said so they're ready for a third party. So we need that spark. We need something that will start that. So we need people that is willing to run third party to start this spark. So I wanna ask you this, like what is your objection towards doing that if there is one? Well, first of all, there was a lot of teeth in the first things that you said. This issue of the Democratic Party being taken for granted, I mean, Black America being taken for granted by the um, uh, by the Democratic establishment. But I would argue that you would, <laughs> if, if Black America wanted to say to the Democratic establishment, don't take us for granted, voting for someone like me would be as effective as voting for so someone in a third party, because you're still outside the context of the corporatist who are running on the same old, same old. Um, Bernie Sanders, despite the things that you said, many of which were true, 
did come with an early day. I believe in Bernie, but go sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll just say it was disappointing, man. But sorry, go ahead. Bernie. I understand. And I and I can and I understand. I understand. I, I get it. I totally get it. And I agree with that. Um Bernie Sanders came within striking distance of the presidency. You know, the way I look at it, and once again, I don't think this is really an issue of right or wrong. This is an issue of a lot of ways to look at it and everybody having to find where they feel their skill set can be most helpful. Um, Bernie, if I run and I run as a Democrat, it's going to be very inconvenient uh, for the Democratic establishment. They will want to invisibilize me. But if I run as a third party candidate, it will be so easy to do that. I feel that if I'm in there, I, I can I, you know, I can get in there. I can say, Joe Biden, you've got to debate me. I, you know, I can go in there. I can put these things on the table. Uh, so, yeah, I think there need to be vital uh, third party efforts. Uh, I don't think that I'm I'm uh, the one to do that. And by the way, to phenomenal mysticism, Marianne Williamson is ultra uncomfortable during this interview. You can feel it. No, I'm not. I just want to uh, jump in really quick and say, um, why not? Like, I, I've kind of changed the focus, at least like on my show, to focus more so on local politics, because in yeah. reference to the progressive progressive policies and progressive issues, I've seen them pass on the local level. So I'm kind of fortunate. Right. I'm in Massachusetts. We've passed a lot of these things, the $15 minimum wage, the wealth tax. We've already passed a lot of those those issues. But I've also seen red states pass those issues as well, Marianne. Like, like South Kansas America. with exactly. the abortion thing recently. Are you, that's where ground zero is now. It's is exactly. on local and state. Absolutely. Exactly. So looking back at it, I look at people like some of the members of the squad and I feel that people like Corey Bush, AOC, I feel like they actually would be more effective on the local level. Uh, they went into Congress, they went into the swamp, and they're obviously heavily controlled by Democratic leadership. That's one of the, the issues that Dennis Kucinich had. That's one of the issues that Cynthia McKinney had is that they call the shots. Why not run for something on the on the local level? Or is that something that you have considered? If my heart, if I woke up one morning and I got, I'm going to run for city council, I've run for city council. The, 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 I'm interested in changing the conversation in this country. And there is no platform for changing the national conversation like a presidential candidacy. And I am fortunate in that I do have, being an author, having a national audience, um, I feel that, that my greatest contribution is to bring up certain topics that are not convenient to the system, to talk about genuine fundamental economic reform that, as you, uh, as Nick has pointed out, is not now occurring, the larger dynamic of American history, the aberrational chapter uh, of the last 50 years, and the massive theft from the middle class and the poor in this country. I feel the, the way I can make the most powerful impact to, to make that case, to say it in a way that matters, uh, if it would be to run, if in fact it feels like I can run. If I can't put together enough of a campaign uh, to make it, to give it enough heft, then I won't do it. That's that's the period I'm in now, um, is discerning that. But that's what I want to do. I want to help upgrade uh, the national conversation uh, in the direction of justice. Marion, I know you only have around 20 minutes or so. I appreciate uh, your time. Any final question that you have, Sabi? Uh, any uh, any final thoughts or uh, any last words just, you have before we send you off? Sabi, just, get, go one, ahead. just one about foreign policy, because this yeah. is an area where the president can act alone and doesn't necessarily need the approval of, of Congress. So I'm curious to hear uh, your, your feelings and your thoughts about the war, the war between Russia and Ukraine right now, like how would you respond if you were president of the United States? And also in reference to Israel and Palestine, how would you respond in those particular situations? So which, uh, why don't we do Israel and Palestine, okay? Israel and Palestine is a very, uh, it's really bad right now. Um, Netanyahu's new government is the most extreme far right government uh, that's ever been in the history of that country. Um, as, as bad as it has always been, really, for the Palestinians, now everything's worse. Uh, it's a real anti-democratic authoritarian direction. Um, and it absolutely must be confronted. 
uh, clearly the uh, occupation is a, the, a prolonged occupation like this is against international law. Clearly the settlements are against international law. Clearly international law says that if uh, you do occupy territory, then you must use the resources of that territory for the benefit of the people. Um, Biden seems to have kind of taken a hands-off approach at this point, and the American president is, must, must stand up more, uh, more forcefully. The United States, to me, the, the moral mission statement of, um, of, of the United States is the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal. Obviously, the whole idea is to expand that franchise. It doesn't just mean white people, it also means black people. It doesn't just mean men, it also means women. It doesn't just mean straight, it also means LBGTQ. And I think we need to recognize that doesn't just mean Americans. So to me, the United States foreign policy as well as our domestic policy, when it comes to Israel and Palestine, we should have equally robust support for both the security and the uh, human rights of both people. The only way to do that at this point is through a two-state solution. Now, I understand that some people would say that a two-state solution is dead, then we need to resurrect it. Because the only answer to that is a situation that is, un everything else is untenable. So uh, the American president uh, should stand up. I, I think this is one area, to be honest, where I think Obama did make an effort. And um, he's unpopular with a lot of people there for that reason, to be honest. But I think he did make an effort to, uh, uh, to bring the Palestinian issue onto the table in a way that it had not been before within the uh, major political dialogue in America. And there I would certainly is. seek there to do is. that. I also think, if I might say, because I'm a Jewish woman, I think that it's kind of, I would have actually some moral authority in doing that. I should not, my support for Israel should not be at the expense of my Jewish values. And as an American, my support for Israel should not be at the expense of my democratic values. Right now, it's becoming that way, and that's a problem. Mar Marion, I pre appreciate for, uh, the answer, but the, I talked to the Palestinian Community Network, got a lot of Palestinian allies. They will not find that to be an acceptable answer. It's one well, I don't know. Uh, they well, have, I don't know. have one state where everyone has equal rights under the law. The, the, the Israel Zionists are not to be trusted to implement a two-state solution. Has that been shown many and many times? So I hope you have conversations with Sunday Palestinians. That, that's a hard. <laughs> well, that's wait a, a minute. Wait. No, uh, no. And, let me speak. I, I just want to also want you. Are you going to respond to that as well? But because I know you have limited time, because also okay, I, I would like well, a chance so to respond. Yeah, go ahead. And I want to ask you about Ukraine. Well, go, go ahead. Yeah, what I would would say to you is when you say you have a lot of Palestinian friends, uh, let, let, how many Palestinian friends do you have? I have a lot of Palestinian friends. You say you've talked to Palestinians. I have talked to Palestinians. So I don't point. think we have a contest here of you're telling me you know Palestinians and I don't. So that doesn't work for me. That's a okay? fair point, but I'm telling you. So not the point is right election. now. On the Palestine. See, if you're not going to let go me well. talk, honey, there's no point in this if you're not going to let me talk. If you're not going to let me talk to the things you say, then there really is no point. We are having the conversation. Uh, these are, conversation. No, we're not. No, we're not. You're doing a lot of mansplaining here, and you're telling me what is. You're not. You're asking me and then not giving me a chance to respond. So uh, there's no reason for me to be in that. Well, I already said, oh, and now more men are going to be laughing at me. So, no, this is not working for me. So this is how I feel. I do believe there should be equally robust support for both Palestinians and Israelis. There is not now in American policy, and that must change. That is what I will say. Do you when support you say BDS? That, oh, go ahead. I, wanted, I was going to say, do you support BDS, Marianne? I would not personally, anybody should be able to boycott what they want. I would support, I would boycott things that come from the settlements because. This, the settlements, I think, boycotting stuff from the settlements makes sense to me. Overall, the problem I have with boycotts anywhere is often it is who it hurts. It hurts Israeli citizens. It didn't have anything to do with this. It hurts Palestinians in many cases. And I don't believe it hurts the U.S., uh, the Israeli government. But I think in a situation like that, everybody should follow their own conscience. And anyone should have the legal right. When there was an effort to deny people the legal right, uh, to uh, boycott, that absolutely would not be okay with me. I love the work that you do. Thank you so much. Savvy, honey, sorry. I really appreciate talking to you. I know sometimes we don't agree, Savvy, but I always uh, enjoy talking to you and it's respectful. So anytime you want to talk, I'll absolutely uh, just let me know, okay? And thank you very, very much for having me on. Ms. Williamson, before you go, I just want to 
ask you one question while sitting here. We got to let it go. It, it, I don't it, know if I'm going to answer that. No, I, I, know I, you have much, I know you don't have much time. No, I already am 10 minutes. You have time for the proletarian. Like we have time for the political. No, okay, um, that's no, that was so disrespectful to me as a woman, as a political figure. Okay, Sabby, if you ever want to talk, honey, I'll be available to you. Okay. Okay, put her, get her out. So I can say what I've been wanting to say and itching and saying in the background. She's full of shit, and it's a good thing that I wasn't on here because I wouldn't be able to contain myself from this fake fucking actor who was just on RBN bullshitting us. Just the same strategy they do. Thing. Hold on, Rome. Just the same strategy they That's do in committees funny. when they have people like Dr. Fauci and they ask a question, yeah. they try to talk long because they don't want to talk about the other thing. That's exactly what she did because she didn't want to talk about Ukraine. And then she just starts rambling on some stupid shit so she doesn't have to answer the question. And then when she sees, hey, these motherfuckers ain't buying it. They brought in some reinforcements. Now she's saying, oh, the guy's this. She's playing this female role where she is the victim. She's trying to say Nick was mansplaining. She's playing this white female role. She's playing this white female role of, oh, a damsel in distress. Because some black people come on. Rome came on and didn't say a word. I came on and didn't say a word. We sitting in the back. You feel intimidated because we're black. Nobody said nothing. You feel intimidated. You CJ, weak ass CJ. motherfucker. CJ, you know what? I came on this bitch. I got put in the back room multiple times. I'm not going to say anything about hey, that. All I, 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 want, all I want to ask her is how do you feel about black liberation? And she feel the same. Nick has taught me so much about foreign policy that there is no black liberation without foreign policy. So... When I look at these things, when I look what's going on, I look at Yemen, I look at Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, blah, blah. Niggas telling me, yeah, we just bombed 20,000 niggas. We just killed 2,000 people. Blah, blah, blah. You know, Sebi and everybody, right? Duh. Her position is to sell us out. Her position in the party is to sell us out. So all I wanted to ask this one. I, I what I is your that. position on black yeah. liberation? Yes, reparations are easy go. It's an easy target to hit. But your reparation plan isn't... I wrote a reparation bill myself. I wrote a reparation plan that will get people 10% of every corporation that was... That, was, uh, 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 that had people bound by Shekelty slavery. You know, from Jim Crow slavery... To fucking uh the prison industrial complex, we're not just talking about shackled slavery. We're not just talking about this, this, and that. We're talking about every fucking thing. Everybody, Nick, okay, see, when Sebi, when Sebi wrong, was talking wrong, to me, wrong, Sebi wrong, said everybody wrong, deserves reparations. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Can we chime in? Like, yeah, you guys yeah, just ran in. Our show. Yeah. You guys just ran in. Like I really wish I could have gave my my closing thoughts. Yeah, crazy. I like, mean, because that we, 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 we had the win already. Like, we already had to win. Like, I got all the sound bites I wanted in this yeah. interview. Like, we didn't have to do that. We didn't. No. Like, I'm really feeling awkward right now. We didn't have to do that. Like, that's the point. We literally, I was about to, I was planning on us doing a, a break, chat, check, and then we can have our thoughts on the interview. Like, we didn't have to do that. That was, that's not the stuff that would make it look good. That's not gonna make us look oh, good. Did I hit that? I wasn't even trying to be I, in there. I, 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 I think overall, I think overall, bro. Like, I, I want I got the sound bites. I want yeah. it, man. Like we yeah. I am tactical in the way we do stuff. That is not tactical. What we just did, what you guys just did. I didn't know no, 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 Nick. I didn't talk to the woman. I didn't say nothing to that woman, Nick. I just came in. Nice, man. Like I'm but, all, like, I'm so like embarrassed right now. Like I didn't say I, I, I am I'm, I'm I'm embarrassed too, to be honest. Like, about what? About a woman that want to bomb? No, that's not the. That's not, that's not the point. Let me hear what they're saying, Rome. I can't hear. I can't hear. Let me hear what they're the saying. The thing is, is like you can't ambush people like that. Like we didn't even get to hear the rest of what she was gonna say, and Nick didn't get a chance to close. I, 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 you I, I, I forgot about it. I was. I said my next question about about Ukraine. You guys ran off. You came in, scared her off. The, I didn't say nothing. Yes, you did. I Ron. missed nothing. Great interview, guys. Hold on, let me let me say let me say this. Um, 
I was coming in because I was supposed to come in. You, you, Me too. you guys were saying that this is over. I don't know about Rome, but I, I was supposed to be coming in to take over the Nick and CJ show, but I guess not. It's it's fine. Um, we're gonna have those battles, bro. Somebody, yeah, some some people are gonna have. It don't matter, like, Rome. That's not that's not the point. That's not the point. That was not professional. This is this is exactly what I'm saying. Like you don't professional, answer. It's you what. Liked it. Professional. No, it's what? Have, I mean, no, let me finish, Rome. You would not have liked it if it happened to us. You wouldn't have liked it if we were on someone else's show and it was supposed to be certain people and then people just come in and ambush. Yes, so you got to yes. put yourself in other because, because you, can disagree. you know what? You know what? I wouldn't say no, so, you can disagree. Because, because you're not talking you about you're, you're not you you're not disagree. actively talking about supporting Israel. You're not you can actively disagree talking about with what okay, people well, have whatever. To say. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. I'll finish out with Go ahead, bro. I'm done. Because you're not actually talking about supporting the military industrial complex. It doesn't matter, Ron. We didn't do it. It doesn't matter. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead, Go ahead. 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 Go ah